Hey everyone, welcome back to By Devon. Today we're doing a tutorial on reverse stamping. So once you've picked up your stamp, I like to do an outline in black. That's when you're gonna start the reverse stamping. So I decided to go with these super cute little Pokemon. Um, three starters, right? Bulbasaur, Squirtle, and Charmander from the original series and games. I'm gonna reverse stamp them and then put them on one nail all together. I like to take off all of the extra that I picked up with my stamp first with a little bit of tape, and then I start thinking about what colors I need. I always pull up a picture on my phone kind of as reference, make sure that I've got all the colors right or as close as I can. Um, it's super easy to mix a lot of these stamping polishes together to make um, another color. Think back to, you know, grammar school art. If you got those three primary colors, you can pretty much make anything that you might need. So for Bulbasaur here, I know that I need some green, some blue, and I'll kind of mix them together to get the different accents that I need. So the big thing about reverse stamping is thinking about which color you need to do first. It's called reverse stamping because you actually have to think about it in the reverse order that you might be painting if you were painting on a canvas where you would do kind of the background first and then move forward. So if you look at Bulbasaur here, kind of his little um, leaf area at the top, kind of like his little hair, I'm gonna do that first and then these kind of circular accents on his legs and his face then his eyes with kind of the white and the pink of his mouth before I go in um, and do kind of his full body color that would actually be underneath those little accents. I use a dotting tool and really until I felt like I was pretty confident with the dotting tool, I didn't move on to using a brush. The big thing with reverse stamping is you need to use more of a dotting motion than an actual like paint or brush stroke. If your paint or your polish on your either brush or dotting tool gets too dry, it's gonna get kind of a stickiness to it and that's gonna pull up your outline color. So I kind of go back and forth into that polish paint a lot just to make sure that it's not gotten that kind of dry stickiness. I really like to use these double-ended kind of cuticle tools. They have a really sharp point on them, which means that you can get just the tiniest bit of polish, get into kind of those cracks and corners of your different images that you are reverse stamping. So I'm gonna go in now on my little palette and kind of mix these two blue and greens to get just a slightly different color for those accents. Um, for my reverse stamping, I don't use any super special polishes. I just use a basic set of Queen that I got on Amazon. And then um, last year for Christmas, I got a slightly larger set from Born Pretty. I feel like between these two sets, I've got most of the basic colors I need, a few um, that are a little bit more metallic that are kind of fun to use. And then I can mix anything that I need from there. I'm gonna use a brush here, but I'm still gonna be doing that kind of dotting rather than brush stroke um, pattern. Just gonna get into those little accents, dot, dot, dot. You don't need a whole bunch of polish, but you do, again, wanna make sure that it's not getting that sticky tackiness to it. It gets when it starts to get dry. If you have something really big that you're filling in, um, I always just put a little bit of paint on my palette and then add to it. I feel like it dries really fast and then that drying is really what's gonna potentially pull up your outline and you don't want that because a lot of the time you can't fix that and it's, you have to kind of start all over. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to a Bulbasaur's eyes and then I'm gonna go in with a red um, and I'm actually, although I could just go right on top of the white, white has a tendency to kind of bleed or pick up colors from whatever's below it um, so I'm or on top of it in this case and so I'm going to kind of as best I can avoid the white especially until it's all the way dry and it keep from ending up with pink rather than the white that I want and it's really okay I mean the fun thing about reverse stamping is that once you've done a color you don't have to worry about messing it up with the exception of what we just talked about with the white um, because you're just going on top of it and then whatever's on top of it you won't really see so when you're looking down at it from this angle 
um, you're not going to be able to see anything when you actually stamp it that goes onto that border as long as you don't go outside of the border. If it's just right on top of that black, you won't be able to see it. So you don't have to be quite as precise as maybe if you were painting an actual portrait, portrait of Bulbasaur. It's also kind of like adult coloring books just with, you know, your nail polish paint, which is fun. So you can see I've already done the little accents on his leg and I'm just gonna go right on top of them with this full body teal. Even here you can see I went on top of his little mouth that I had covered in because none of that will show if there's already that other color. If you've ever seen someone painting windows from the inside, it's the same exact um, kind of philosophy. And again, I'm gonna, as best I can, kind of try to stay away from those whites because white is gonna have more of a tendency to potentially pick up the color that you put underneath it. All right, and here he is. Ah, Bulbasaur, one of my faves, so cute. So I'm going to um, just add a little bit more where I saw that there were some holes. Um, these stampers that you're able to see through are great for reverse stamping. You can kind of see as you're going what you're doing, where you need to add in. And you can see again here on the back, it's almost all of that blue color, but when it was flipped around, you could see all of those details that we took all that time. So I use a sticky base coat. I put that on top of this nail I had previously used my dip powder for and I went through all of the dip powder steps and now I'm ready to put this little guy on after that sticky base dries for just a little bit. You want it to still have that tackiness and kind of figure out where I want to position him. Again, a great reason to get these kind of see-through monocle stampers. I push it down and then I kind of roll my stamper off um, kind of slowly to make sure that I don't accidentally um, pull too fast. And there little Bulbasaur is. So I'm gonna do the other two from the starters, Charmander and Squirtle. And I'm gonna put it on a little bit faster speed, but you'll notice I'm still doing that dotting action. And then for each one, because the sticky base coat has kind of had a time to dry, I'm gonna add more sticky base coat. And then I'll show you my tip for keeping your stamps from getting smeared when you go for your top coat. So the trick that I use to keep my stamps from smearing is hairspray. Hairspray hardly ever lets me down, especially if I, you know, hairspray it, wait a few, you know, five, ten minutes, and then I can use whatever kind of top coat I want. Um, because I use a dip system, I usually use my dip liquids top coat when I finish my base color nail, and then I've been using um, just a regular either shiny top coat or matte top coat. I decided to go matte top coat for these. I think when you're able to eliminate a little bit of that shine, all the details show up a little bit more. Thanks for stopping by. Like, comment, subscribe. This was by Devin. Bye.